able to be, amen. And we wanted to say, amen. We are so proud of Brother Cameron Williams, amen. Amen. His, he plays football for West Oso, amen. And his mother sent us a highlight reel of him playing. And I said, that's a bad boy, let me tell you. <laughs> You know, they said he scored four touchdowns, and I think they have that saying where they say you leave him in the dust or eat your dust, amen, amen. But we're very proud of Cameron, amen. Y'all give him a hand, amen. <laughs> Ain't trying to, try to embarrass him, amen, but we're very proud of him, amen. If you would turn with me to Luke the ninth chapter, amen, the 57th verse, amen. And when you are there, you can say Amen. Amen. And if you would not mind, just one more time, standing, amen, for the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading, amen, from the New Living Translation, so it might read slightly differently than what some of you have. Amen. And it says, as they were walking along, Someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another person, come follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. But your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Verse 61, another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. May God have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I just want to speak briefly, amen, from the subject today, being a faithful follower. Amen. Being a faithful follower follower. Amen. And, and the account declares that uh, someone was speaking to Jesus and, and this person said to Jesus, listen, I'll go with you wherever you go. And another spoke and Jesus said, well, come and follow me. And, and this person said, well, hold on first. There's a funeral that I must attend. I've got to you know, attend my, my father's funeral. And then there was another man, the Bible uh, speaks of that declares uh, he agreed, I'll follow you, Jesus, but first let me go home and say goodbye to those that are at my house, to my loved ones, to my family, and to my friends. And Jesus spoke to them, and some people may have thought that it was insensitive or harsh, but he, he spoke to them and said, listen, no man having put his hand to the plow, no one, no woman having put their hand to the plow and then looking back is fit for the kingdom." In other words, what he was saying is that nobody who starts following Christ and working for the Lord and then for whatever reason turns back is fit, amen, for the kingdom, amen. No one who starts following and then stops is fit for the kingdom. And this is the thing that I've learned and I speak of myself when I say this. We are some great starters, I'm one of the best starters you ever want me. We some we are some great, fantastic, wonderful starters. Amen. We will start anything. You know, I'm going to start a scripture reading plan and read the Bible through through a year. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start working out. Amen. I'm going to start eating right. Amen. I'm going to start living for God. Amen. Amen. Somebody even said, I'm going to start coming to church faithfully. 
But I have learned that starting is not the issue because when we start, we start with zeal, we start with sincerity, amen, uh, uh, and, and we start with all enthusiasm, but starting is not the problem, amen. Uh, the problem that we run into is being faithful, amen, and committed to what we start because these men in the account started so, so sincerely, but no sooner had they agreed to follow Christ, amen, they found something that they deemed more important, amen, than following Christ. How many of you ever started something? Amen. Oh, look, everybody got their hand up. How many of you have ever started something? And let me finish the question. How many of you have ever started something that you did not finish? I mean, you meant well. You meant it with everything. I mean, I, I, I said four months ago, I said, you know what? This time when I go back to the doctor, I'm going to start eating right. I'm going to stay away from this. I'm going to stay away from that. And one month went by, and I said, well, I still got three months left. <laughs> Y'all know how we do. I said, I got three months left. I'm going to just loose, be a little bit more loose with my eating. I'm going to fix it. And another month went by, and I said, well, I got two months left. That month went by and I said, I got one month left and I'm going to buckle down. And then we went on our vacation, that trip. I said, well, forget it. <laughs> Roscoe's chicken and waffle or Lolo's chicken and waffles and all of that stuff I was eating. And I went back to the doctor. And of course, I knew what my results were going to be. But I meant well when I started. it. But I did not finish. Amen. I did not finish what I started. I had people come to this church so many times that the Lord will bless them. And they say, you know, I... I feel the spirit of the Lord in this church. I love this church, they will say. I found my church home. And they say, I'm going to start coming faithfully here every Sunday. I had somebody tell me that. As a matter of fact, Pastor, I'll see you next Sunday. And I don't think I have to tell you the rest of the story. Amen. Amen. And I believe that they meant it. And when we talk about fall out amongst the faithful, there is a growing trend of those who are now disavowing their Christian faith. What am I saying? People who have started out believing in God and have now said, you know what? I, don't know. I no longer believe God. I no longer believe the Bible. I no longer believe, as a matter of fact, there's a popular uh, Christian author and a minister and another uh, worship leader at a very well-known church who's recently come out and he said, I'm losing my faith. Somebody said that to me. I'm losing my faith and I'm all right with it. They said that only two in ten Americans under the age of 30 believe intending church is an important or worthwhile 59% of millennials age 23 to 38, that's the millennial, that age group, 59% of millennials who were raised in church have dropped out. This is the times that we're living in. 59% have dropped off. And when you ask those who have said, you know what, I, I no longer believe in Christ. I'm no longer a Christian. I'm, I found my own way. I found a better way. Those who say, I just no longer attend church. If you ask them why, a majority of them will say, well, I've been, you know, I've been disillusioned. You know, I, I was hurt in the church. I had a bad experience. And that's why I didn't go back. And I find it interesting because you could have a bad experience at your favorite restaurant. And you'll still go back. Matter of fact, you make excuses. You know, they were kind of short staffed today. I kind of understand. Maybe they got a new cook in the kitchen. But you still go back. Some of y'all have a bad experience at work every week. Amen. Listen, I can testify on that one. 17 years. Some days I leave there and say, oh Lord. But you know what? Come Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Monday evening, whenever your shift starts. Good afternoon, Jim. Hey, how y'all doing? 
Ready to start another week. I'm here. Your child could come home from school and say, Mama, I hate my school. People are bullying me. I don't like my teacher. I don't like the school that I'm in. You say, son, daughter, suck it up. That's life. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to want. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. This is a learning experience. Not everybody's going to want to be your friend. But when it comes to church, the first thing to happen, somebody, you know what? I ain't never going back. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. They didn't call my name on the program. Somebody sat in my seat. The pastor didn't speak to me. I'm never going back. And I find that that's so interesting. And for some, it's not that serious. It's just a matter of convenience. Amen. They say, listen, I don't have time to go to church. And see, we got technology now, and it's wonderful. I can go on YouTube and watch the sermons again. I can watch the live stream. I can listen to the replay of the service. And, all. and technology is one of you say, oh, it's an inconvenience. I can listen to the message and mop my floor. I can listen to the message, amen, and shave. I can listen to the message and get ready to barbecue for the game this afternoon. I, it's an inconvenience for me, amen, to be faithful. And, and, you know, and, I, and I find it interesting because we talk about being inconvenienced, amen. We talk about having to go out of our way. And yet I've watched these past couple of weeks people all over this nation and this city have gotten up out of their beds, gotten dressed, got in their cars and driven across town and sat in their cars in lines or stood in lines for a chicken sandwich. Oh, I, oh, I was in the number. I bought the hype. I said, let's go try this chicken sandwich. And I got to Popeye's and got in the line. It was already wrapped around the building. And they said, it's going to be 25 to 30 minutes for your sandwich to be ready. And I sat right there. And I read a story about another man. He said he was driving home with the chicken sandwich. And it was so good, he finished it in the car, turned around, and got back in line and waited another hour. For a chicken sandwich. Do you see? This is the generation that we live in. For a chicken sandwich. But you can't come to church. You will wait an hour and a half. And then we'll even get on Facebook and testify about a chicken sandwich. <laughs> they said Popeyes, this is a fact, Popeyes received over $23 million worth of free advertisement because of word of mouth on social media. And you'll post about a chicken sandwich but won't talk about Jesus. the thing about social media they have a thing even Papa says if you like us follow us if you like my album follow me on Twitter if you like my book follow me on Facebook and when you hit that follow button you get updates and you get to see the latest feed and they tell you what the next product that's coming out. So you up to date with everything. And if I search some people's feed or who they were following or who are they subscribed to, I'm sure they'd say, you know what, that you're following Popeyes faithfully. Amen. Some people are following Drake or some people are following Miley Cyrus and some people are, 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 are following the Dallas Cowboys and, and some people are, are following uh, uh, Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott and some people are following Marvin Sapp and some people are following Stephen Furtick and Elevation Worship and some people are following Hillsong but I got a question are you following Jesus Christ? Are 
Are you a, fa a faithful follower? See, you follow them faithfully. You wake up and see, I wonder what they're eating for breakfast. What pictures have they posted on Instagram? Did they get married? And who is their fiance? And all of that. And You know, but are you a follower of Jesus Christ? We're talking about being fit for the kingdom because Jesus said, Jesus said, no one who starts out following me, no one who starts out putting their hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. If you can imagine, and I know we don't really work in fields, there are some who still do, but if you can imagine hiring someone, and that's what happens when you give your, your, your life to Christ. The Bible almost calls you a hireling. I'm a servant now. You hire someone to work your field. And you look out the window and you see them going back and forth with that plow working the field. And then a couple of hours later, you're looking there out there. And then you take a glance out there and all of a sudden you see the plow sitting out in the middle of the field, unattended. And you walk out and see if someone, you say, what? happened to the one that I hired to plow this field and they say oh they got tired or some of you say oh you know they had something better to do you know I, I talked to someone just this week at work and they said you know what I, I wanted to come to church this Sunday this is what they told me this week I want to be I want to come to church talk about even coming here I want to be at church this Sunday but the dinosaur exhibit is in town so, have you got kids? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Right down there at the American Bank Center. I don't know it's in Robstown this time. Robstown. Fairgrounds in Robstown. The, di the dinosaur exhibit is in town and I can't come to church. You were working in the vineyard, but you got sidetracked by dinosaurs. <laughs> you set your hand to the plow, but what happened? Oh, they're at the club right now. Oh, I know. See, this somebody said, oh, Lord, I thought this was blue jeans and t-shirt Sunday. Huh? <laughs> no man having said, this is the Bible now. Jesus said this. No one having set their hand to the plow started working for God. And then turning around, he said, it's fit for the kingdom of God. What if, what if Jesus, what if, what if Jesus had stopped what he started in the middle, on his way to Calvary? Because the Bible says at any moment he could have called a legion of angels down and said, you know what? He could have tapped out and said, you know what? That's it. Time out. I'm done. I don't have to do this. At any moment he could have done it. What if Jesus in the middle of what he had done set his head, hand to the plow I'm doing the Father's will had decided to turn around. Where would we be? But the Bible says he was faithful even unto death. And that's why he was able to say when he was up on that cross you know what? It is finished. I finished what I started. I, set, I put my hand to the plow and I finished the work that I was sent to do. And because he finished what he started, because he remained a faithful follower of the Father's will, here we are with the right to salvation. You have no idea the blessing. That is tied to your commit, your, your committal, your willingness to commit to the cause of Christ. You have no idea. You know, I look back and I'm almost done. I look back and I almost can't believe it sometimes. I look back and it's been almost 30 years since I gave my life to the Lord. And, and I'm not saying that for applause. Almost 30 years I gave my life to, to the Lord at a young age. Almost 30 years since I gave my life to the Lord. I got ordained as a deacon. And I say I started in ministry once I got ordained as a deacon. at seven, at, It's been 17 years. At the age of 22, I was ordained as a deacon. So 17 years it's been. I've been, 
I've been pastoring for almost uh, nine, for nine years now. And I look at all of those years and in that time, I've seen folks come. I've seen folks go. I've seen folks that started out plowing the, this, this vineyard and working the harvest with me that have changed their minds and turned away and walked away from God. I've seen folks make promises before the Lord and take their vow back and walk off. And here I am, 30 something years later, still doing the same thing that God called me to. And some folks will say, you know what, man? Well, are you a fool? No, I'm a follower. I had a conversation with somebody just yesterday. And see, I've been through some stuff. Let me tell you. We talk about church hurt and all that stuff. I've been through some stuff. And we were talking about all of the stuff that we've seen in churches. Some of y'all have seen some stuff too. I've had men of God, women of God that I look up to betray my trust. I, I've had men of God say things to me and offensive. And here's the thing. They knew what they were doing. It wasn't one of those, oh, they didn't mean it. Oh, they knew exactly what it was that they were doing and what they were saying. I've been offended and I was talking to this person and they were saying the same thing I was saying. They said, you know what? It's a miracle that we're still in, in church. And they said, you know what? See, it, it's a wonder not only that we're still in church, but that we even choose to serve in leadership positions. Because I've led in some positions that they say, bleeding while you're leading. People say, oh, yes. People stabbing you in the back, all kinds of stuff. And they said, it's a wonder that we're still in church. It's a wonder that we still love God. It's a wonder that we're still working in the ministry. But here's the reason why. I'm a follower. Hold, hold on. But I don't follow man. I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's never lied to me. He's never come short of his word. He's always kept his promise. And because he's been faithful to me, I have no problem being faithful. As a matter of fact, I'll follow him till I die. God is looking for some faithful followers. Amen. God is looking for some faithful followers. No man, see, and I know we don't like to hear stuff like this, but this is the word of God. No man, I know a pastor whose wife told him, it's either me or God. She was done with, see, she was done with this whole church thing. She was ready to go live her life, as we say, you know, live it up. She said, I, I'm, I'm, this is holding me in the crap, being a minister's wife and all of that. Kind of, this ain't what I signed up for. This is not what I want to do. So, preacher, it's either me or God. And this is what Jesus meant by saying, you know what? No man having put his hand to the plow, you got to be willing to forsake all. Amen. To follow me. That pastor said, you know what? I choose the Lord. Oh, and nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody said it was. He said, I choose God. And she left. But you know what? The Lord sent him another wife. And he still had his relationship with God. Still has his relationship with God. What are you willing to give up to follow the Lord? No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back. Amen. Is fit for the kingdom of God. I preached to myself this morning. Amen. We've got to, God is looking for some faithful followers. Amen. Are you willing to be one? Amen. Don't have the Lord look at you on judgment day and say, you know what? You bought 20 Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Amen. Huh? But you couldn't come to church. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? I saw some people this morning and see we were go I went to go look at the refreshments and went to Sam's Club and went to uh, Walmart. People were up stocking their baskets, getting ready for the game, you know. Got the Cowboys jerseys on and all that. I said, but are you going to the house of the Lord first? The Cowboys can't heal your body. Right. 
They can't save your soul. But you faithful. I'm not a bandwagon fan. Well, that's great. But are you on God's bandwagon, huh? God is looking for some faithful followers. Amen. Amen. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Amen. I don't know about you. Amen. But I want him to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter ye. Amen. Into the joy of the Lord. Amen. I want everybody to stand. Amen. I want everybody to stand. Amen. I know this may not have been one of those...